Until a year ago, no matter how viral or famous a meme became, its creator could make exactly zero dollars out of it. But this year, NFTs changed that, and now the creators of the most popular memes are making tens, hundreds, or even millions of dollars from selling them. Hello, I'm Matt Garcia and I write books about NFTs. In today's video I'm going to talk about one specific type of NFT, meme NFTs. I'm also going to go through the list of the most expensive memes of all time. All of them sold this year in 2021 and the figures they went for are quite impressive. But before the list, I'm going to give some context about what NFTs are, what memes are and about how NFTs allow for the first time in history for people to sell their memes. So if you don't need all that introduction, you can skip right to minute 5 more or less of this video and get the list. Ok, so meme NFTs, what are they? Well, like all other NFT types, meme NFTs are simply a digital certificate that allows you to prove that somebody owns something. As simple as that, a certificate of ownership, that's all an NFT is. The special thing about these certificates though is that they are ultra safe, because they are stored in a special type of computer system called a blockchain. Blockchains used as a mainstream way to store these certificates only became popular this year, in 2021, more or less around February. That's why all of a sudden everybody's talking about NFTs, because they really are very new. The difference between meme NFTs and the other 12 types of NFTs is also very straightforward. While other NFT types may prove the ownership of land, art, collectibles, sports memorabilia and so on, meme NFTs are proving the ownership of memes. By the way, if you are curious to know more about the other 12 types of NFTs, in my last video I went through each type with lots of examples and images to explain them. So back to memes. If you are over 40 or 50, I'm sure you have heard of memes. But maybe you don't quite know what they are really. Honestly, until a couple years ago, I myself didn't quite know what they were. Of course I had heard of them a million times, but I was just too busy with my previous job to spend time on social media and properly engage with meme culture. Well, a meme is simply an iconic image or a very short video that is so often shared and by so many people on social media that it becomes like a virus, like a cultural infection that all of a sudden reaches millions of people. You can come across these memes on Twitter, on internet forums like Reddit or 4chan, but also in more man on the street social networks like Facebook or WhatsApp. There are many subtypes of memes. But the most important type, by far, is the one consisting of a humorous photograph with a superimposed text. These images are shared during social media interactions to reinforce the point that a person is trying to make. Now, one special thing about memes is that the image tends to stay the same, but the superimposed text often changes, and the text can be changed by any user at any point. This creates some sort of an evolutionary phenomenon in which several iterations of a parent joke succeed each other, to the point that sometimes the joke is about the joke itself, becoming some sort of a collectively shared inside joke that can span days, weeks, months or even years. Not only that, memes can sometimes spawn entirely new memes, with not only new text, but also a new image that references the original parent image to some degree. Yes, the whole thing is really similar to the biological evolution of species. But instead of the survival of the fittest, here it is about the survival of the funniest. In fact, the coiner of the term meme was a biologist. It was Richard Dawkins. Dawkins invented the term in his amazing book, The Selfish Gene, in 1976. So the internet wasn't even a thing at the time. He used it to refer to any human idea that spreads virally from person to person. Decades later, when these pop culture images appeared on the internet, somebody decided to use the term meme to refer to them, and it stuck. By its very nature, a successful meme is a meme that has already spread all over the internet, and so is already on millions of people's computers and phones for free. So the meme author may have created an extremely successful cultural artifact, but everybody has enjoyed it for free, and the meme author can't get a financial reward from that. So, traditionally, meme creators, oftentimes of humble origins, 
couldn't find any easy way to monetize their huge cultural success. That's what I call the broke celebrity phenomenon. That was going to change though. Specifically, it changed this year, in 2021, just a few months ago. If this last pandemic couple of years hadn't been weird enough, I mean, the government asking people to stay locked down in their houses and people happily obeying, the Pentagon admitting that there are UFO videos that they can't explain and people not batting an eye, well, if that hadn't been weird enough, around February of this year, a new shocking trend started to get newspaper headlines. People were buying and selling image files, or JPEGs as some people call them, for ridiculous amounts of money. And what's more, those JPEG images not only were super expensive, but were also different from traditional physical artworks in the sense that anybody could copy them and have them on their computer for free, not just the owner. Because, unlike physical artworks, digital files can be copied and the copy is identical to the original. I could make an entire video trying to explain why people are buying these digital image files, despite them being so easy to copy. But the gist of it is that we, as a society, have spontaneously decided, at least for now, that it doesn't matter that your image can be copied. What matters is to be the official owner of that image, that is, the owner of the NFT certificate that represents the official ownership of that image. Because the NFT certificate, unlike the image file it represents, is not only unique, but also unforgeable, thanks to the complex and super safe blockchain technology on which NFTs are built. So the actual image file doesn't matter as much as that certificate. On the contrary, in this new paradigm, the more the image file is copied and shared, the more famous the image becomes, and so the more valuable your certificate of official ownership becomes. In this way, in 2021, NFTs allowed the artists who create digital illustrations, animations, and other forms of digital art to finally be able to sell their images as if they were unique pieces of physical art. We can say that NFTs allowed any non-physical artwork to become as exclusive and as monetizable as a physical painting or a physical sculpture. And what is one of the most famous and successful forms of digital art? Yes, our friend, the meme. Like any other type of image file, a meme can now be bought and sold thanks to NFTs. It is a simple process. The author of the meme creates an NFT certificate this process is called minting an NFT, and publicly declares that the official ownership of his meme is from now on represented by that NFT. Therefore, although the image file may be on everyone's computer, the official ownership of that meme is only held by the person who possesses the NFT certificate. That's how people are buying when they buy an NFT. Sounds crazy? Sounds emperor new clothes? Maybe it is. For all we know, we could be witnessing the peak of civilization's decadence, a never more baroque act of consumerist exuberance before a World War III that will reset us all back to frugality and common sense. I don't know. Nobody can really know if NFTs are here to stay. But the thing is that, right now, people are interested in buying these NFT certificates that represent the ownership of those famous memes, and pay loads for it. The first big meme sale took place in February 2021, and was the sale of Neon cards. It sold for a large sum, we'll see how much in a minute, and it kick-started the trend of selling memes. This sale was so pivotal for two reasons. First, because it supplied the media with what the media needs, a catchy, easy-to-repeat headline that spreads like wildfire. And second, because the creator of that meme, Chris Torres, helped many other meme creators to sell their memes, which greatly accelerated the process of meme NFTs becoming popular as an investment asset. Torres had sold his knee and cat in an NFT marketplace specializing in art known as Foundation.hub. After his sales success, the smart public relations team of Foundation got together with Torres to find and help other meme creators so that they could use the platform to sell their memes. And it led to a string of very successful meme sales, generating lots of money for the meme creators who, after years of seeing very little to no money from their viral fame, finally got a juicy paycheck. It was also a great success for Foundation, which has established itself as the go-to place for selling memes. As you'll see now on the list, out of the 15 most expensive meme sales, 
13 took place on foundation and just two on competing marketplaces. Also instrumental in the flourishing of this meme economy were Ben Lashes, the agent who represents many of the meme authors featured on the list, and the experts from Know Your Meme, an internet database specializing in documenting meme history and culture, who helped the selling marketplaces to verify that the sellers were really the legitimate meme creators. Number 15. Success Kid. Years ago, Sam Griner and his mother Lainey gifted us with this super handy meme. All our success emotions can be easily memed thanks to this genius photo. Sam and Lainey sold the meme on the foundation marketplace, as did most of the people on this list. So from here on, I will only mention the marketplace if it wasn't foundation. Number 14. Bad Luck Brian. There's something endearing about Brian. He's like that old high school classmate who never understood that your mom shouldn't be picking your clothes after you are 12. However, later in life, the real Brian, Kyle Craven, got lucky. He sold his meme for a handsome $37,000. Number 13. Friendship ended with New Dasir. Number 13 is such a guilty pleasure. There's something in it that appeals to the snob in all of us. I mean, there is so much social inadequacy in this photo montage that it is thrilling to watch. However, although we may have laughed at him, Mohamed Asif Raza, New Dasir's ex-friend forever, is the one laughing now, laughing all the way to the bank. 51k equals many yearly salaries in his native Pakistan. Number 12. Scumbag Steve. Over the years, Blake Boston, the real scumbag Steve, has gone from most infamous party crasher of the internet to hunky family man. He's also $54,000 richer. Number 11. Keyboard Cut. Keyboard Cut is one of the oldest memes, so old that the original clip was recorded on videotape. It is also one of the only two animated GIFs on this list. Number 10. Trollface. Trollface is such a powerful illustration the twisted sadistic smile and small malicious eyes perfectly convey that dark side of our soul, our troll side. I think that the $70,000 were really low. This meme is such an icon of internet culture that probably with a bit more publicity could have sold for 5 or 10 times that price. Number 9. Creepy Chan. Alison Harvard, the real Creepy Chan, got her nickname from her love for the spooky and from becoming a viral sensation on the 4chan forum. The adult Allison is a model and an artist who still likes it creepy. Number 8. Grumpy Cat. Tabitha is a smart businesswoman who had already managed to monetize her meme before this NFT, but $78,000 is a hell of a cherry on the cake. Number 7. Side Eyeing Chloe. Chloe allowed us to tell people how preposterously stupid their ideas are, but the real Chloe is all smiles. Number 6. Creepy Chan 2. Yes, Alison Harvard managed to get two of her memes on this list, and at $81,000, this one sold even better. By the way, all the memes on this list sold in Ether, the Ethereum currency, so all the prices I'm quoting here are just the dollar equivalent on the day of the sale. Number 5. Harambe. The sad death of Harambe meant an immortal out of him. But this image captured by his photographer and friend Jeff McCarry also helped to make Harambe an integral part of our collective imagination. Number 4. Disaster Girl. Here the jump in price is dramatic, over four times higher than the previous memes. But to be honest, the amount of storytelling in this photo is almost impossible to match. The burning house, the face expression, the perfect composition, a very well deserved almost half a million dollars for Zoe Roth. Number 3. Overly Attached Girlfriend. Her viral photo boosted Lena Morris popularity on YouTube, but later the weight of fame made her partially retire from the limelight. However, some things are never forgotten, and her hilarious creepy girlfriend face will forever be internet history. Number 2. Neon Cat. Neon Cat was the first meme to sell from this entire list. It was February 2021, right at the moment when NFTs were starting to go mainstream. This and the fact that the meme sold for over half a million dollars generated instant media attention and made Chris Torres one of the most influential people in the nascent NFT world. Bonus. Pepe the Frog Genesis NFT. 
This one is tricky because rather than a meme, this NFT is a comic book page that inspired a meme. However, I've included it here because it did spawn the most important meme saga in history, the Pepe memes. No other character has generated more memes than Pepe. It even inspired one of the most important NFT collectibles, the rare Pepe's. In my opinion, the only collection that could one day replace CryptoPunks as the most valuable NFT collectible. But anyway, rare Pepe's are an entirely different rabbit hole that I will explore in detail in another video. As for this comic book page NFT, it was sold on the marketplace OpenSea for the brain bashing sum of $3.4 million. Number 1. Doge. And of course, the Doge. That internet giant had to be the first. Actually, 2021 made Doge go from big icon to absolute titan. At the beginning of the year, a joke cryptocurrency that had been named after this meme, the Doge coin, began to rise in price and also in cultural importance when Elon Musk decided to shield it. Then, in June, the NFT of the meme was put up for sale on the decentralized marketplace Zora and sold for the volcano eruption brain sum of $4 million. It was acquired by a group of buyers that had teamed up by establishing a decentralized autonomous organization known as the Pleasure DAO. But man, $4 million. No wonder that Atsuko reveres her golden egg goose, I mean her dog. So that's it, those are the most expensive memes of all time. But if that wasn't crazy enough, and forgive me for saying crazy so many times through this video, if that wasn't crazy enough, after that, uh, something else happened. And actually the buyers of the Doge meme decided to resell it. And they resold it in a very special way. They first fractionalized it. Fractionalization, also known as sharding, means to take one NFT certificate of ownership, in this case, the Doge certificate of ownership, and divide it into many shares. It's a bit like taking a private company public by dividing its ownership into shares that many different small investors can buy. So they did that, they fractionalized Doge by using a platform known as Fractional.R and put those fractions up for sale. In particular, they divided Doge into 17 billion little shards. But the thing is that they sold only 20% of those fractions and they kept the remaining 80% for them so they can sell it in the future. So how much did they get from that 20%? $44 million. At that price point, had they sold the entire 100% of the meme, the total value of the Doge photograph would have been a quarter of a billion dollars. Yes, the numbers are just beyond human comprehension. But the Doge meme fractions are now a tradable token, and so the value of those tokens fluctuates in price daily like any other tradable asset. This is the graph of the evolution of the Doge meme fractions token, from the moment it was divided on the 1st of September until today. A couple of days after the initial release of the fractions, on the 3rd of September, their price peaked at $0.038 which would have given a total value for the entire meme of, brace yourselves, $650 million. Nearly three quarters of a billion dollars for the certificate of official ownership of an image file of a cute dog. At that peak price, the Doge meme would have become the most expensive artwork in the history of humanity, surpassing even Salvator Mundi, a painting by Leonardo da Vinci that sold for $450 million and is the current most expensive piece of physical art ever sold. But after that, the price of the fractions quickly fell, then rose again. Anyway, what matters is that even at its absolute bottom, on the 13th of September, the total price of the meme was still an impressive $122 million. That is 30 times more than the $4 million they had paid for it three months earlier and almost twice the price of the most expensive non-fractional NFT ever sold, Beeple's $69 million digital collage every day. This means that, to some extent, the most expensive meme NFT ever sold is also the most expensive NFT ever sold. And for a few hours, it also became the most expensive artwork in the history of humankind. Hey, where are the newspaper headlines for that? 
So that's it. That's all for today. Thank you so much for having watched this video. And if you like this type of content, I'm going to be creating many new NFT videos that go very deep into what they are and how they work. So you can subscribe to this channel to get those. Also, you can follow me on Twitter where I sometimes write a long, very long tweet threads that go, uh, that take a complex NFT topic and describe it in a very easy to read way. And people seem to really love those. And also sometimes I warn about investment opportunities in the NFT space that people are not really taking, paying attention to. So uh, all in all, I think there is quite a bit of value there. Uh, so anyway, thank you so much for uh, being here again and uh, take care of yourselves and see you soon.